Good morning. I was a teenager sitting at Curtis Hickson Hall in Tampa, Florida with 20,000 other Christians attending a seminar that was sweeping the nation. I would attend it about 10 times. I wanted to grow in my new faith in Christ. So as I was reflecting on Jude's exposure of the false teachers of his day, I was so grateful for the scriptures I had been faithfully taught in my early years. Uh, it was at that seminar that I first heard the challenge to read five Psalms and one proverb each day. Uh, since today is July 16th, I would read Psalm 16, 46, 76, 106, 136, and then Proverbs 16. This would help me better understand the heart of God through the Psalms and gain wisdom from the Proverbs. I've done that many times over the last five decades, and I can see the benefit of the blessings that the truth of God's Word have brought to my life. I remember being given a challenge to follow Solomon's example and ask God for wisdom uh, from 1 Kings 3. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David, but I'm only a little child I do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you've not asked for, both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in my ways and obey my statutes and commands as David your father did, I will give you long life. So, from my teenage years, I've continually asked God for his wisdom uh, to do all that he has assigned me in my lifetime. At the seminar, I was also encouraged to memorize Romans 6, at least the first 14 verses. Yeah, not just a verse, a passage. The teacher believed that according to Psalm 1, when you memorize and meditate on scripture, you reap the benefit of those particular scriptures. And since the theme of Romans 6 is victory over sin, if I would memorize and meditate on that passage, the Holy Spirit would use the word to help me overcome sin. I wanted that, so I did. I memorized Romans 6. And when I was tempted, I would follow Jesus' example of quoting scripture, and I would begin quoting the passage. And I found that, for me, it worked. There is power in the word, in our minds and hearts. Now, I would often joke to Shirley that by the time I got done quoting the 14 verses, I couldn't even remember what I was being tempted with. Maybe that's one way it worked. So today, I'm led to issue to you that same challenge. At the least, memorize the first two verses. Why? Well, because as we're learning in our study of Jude, it gives us the correct mindset toward sin. The false teachers perverted the grace of God into sensuality, sexual sin. Romans 6 refutes their perversion and gives us the correct mindset 
about God, His grace, and sin. So today I'm going to quote it to you, and then when I'm done, I'll lead in a time of prayer. Uh, thanks for listening this week. For these moments, listen to the word of the Lord. Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he can't die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under law but under grace. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gift of grace that teaches us to say no to sin and empowers us to say yes to holiness. Today, fill us with your Holy Spirit and lead us to live holy lives. And now, offer your prayers. God bless you.